Today's video comes with a great deal of unfortunate news. The Eastfield Mall, a beloved mall in Springfield, Massachusetts, is closing this year with a tentative date of July. They plan on demolishing the entire mall. How did it get to this point? This mall started losing its anchors in 2011. J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Sears called this mall home. Nothing has come in to replace these anchors. It's not a lack of traffic that's causing people to not go to this mall. Springfield alone has a population of over 150,000 people. The surrounding towns are quite populated as well. Another big blow to this mall was it lost its movie theater in 2020. I know a lot of malls suffered in, during COVID in 2020, but Eastfield Mall already had a little bit of struggle going on. <laughs> Back in the day, you couldn't walk through this mall. Now when you come here, you won't find too many patrons as you're gonna see. Last year, this mall became home to many small businesses, wonderful shops, and you can just tell the effort that a lot of these tenants put into their small businesses. We're gonna interview some of those tenants today. We wanna get their side of the story. is going to be demolished. It was built back in the 60s, so, you know, it's a little dated for a mall. So I think if we can update that, along with everything else in the city, I think it's going to enhance the marketing ability. Sears at Eastfield Mall in Springfield is set to close in early September. When you enter the Eastfield Mall these days, you're hit with this feeling of just emptiness. In some spots, you notice neglect. Some of the empty storefronts can be a little hard to look at. But you also get this feeling of nostalgia. You look at the neon, you look at the bright colors, you look at the beautiful thriving storefronts that are still there. The water fountain, the big beautiful windows illuminating the mall. This mall has a sense of personality. Just like Midnight Odyssey Crystals, a store that is just doing phenomenal. We're gonna talk to one of the employees here. Well, I'm Cassie and I work here at Midnight Odyssey Crystals. Um, I've only worked at the mall for about six months, but I've come here since I was like five. Um, I've been seeing movies at the theater before COVID. Pretty much, I think I saw like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Like that's how, that's how long. Um, all of my friends, like this was a meeting spot. Like it was, hey, what are you doing after school? Nothing, do you want to go to the mall? And we ended up here and it's like we get this flow of all these kids and it's giving them something to do when they get out of school and now it's just gone they're tearing it all down to put in chains which i think is so beyond the purpose of why the small is here you know it's mm -hmm. meant for the small mom and pops like that's what they want they want the entrepreneurs and then we have like this crystal store. This is like one of the first in this area. You gotta go all the way out to either Connecticut or Northampton. And then they're just getting rid of it. They, I feel like there hasn't really been any chances to try and save it, any like crowdfunding that they had as an option, which really sucks. I then asked Cassie if she thinks anything could have been done to save the mall, if anything could have been done differently over the past few years. Definitely, I think that it feels like there's no care. It feels like they just kind of tossed it out like it's old, nobody really likes it anymore, but almost every person you talk to is like, they're taking the mall down, really? I, you know, I never saw anything for crowdfunding. I never saw anything like, hey guys, the mall's gonna die, help us out. You don't really see many ads. They have some flyers around in the windows saying, hey, we want small businesses but then they just kind of <laughs> you to the side, you know? Um, this is one of the few stores that's made it because it's it's got that niche 
thankfully, but they don't really do a lot of advertising. Like I think they, I've seen one ad for our store that says we now have a bigger store on the, the sign outside and that's about it. Um, there's some Facebook, some Instagram, I can't even think of the word, <laughs> but it's really everyone just kind of heard about it all of a sudden. There was no warning even. And then there was concern that we were just going to close without even a chance to try and sell anything. Like they were just going to kick us out and we had, you know, X many days to get out, which when you look around, we got a lot of stuff to move. We can't just close that such short notice. So it's like they just kicked all the little businesses to the side. Right. Well, I feel like they, they could have done more. If they were to bring in more small businesses and make it more small business friendly, this would be a great shopping destination. Now I'm just going to show everybody the wonderful things you have in here. And there's just, it's huge. The store is huge. I mean, you just have a ton of stuff. Half of our stock is moved to our other location. So going forward, you guys are going to continue to operate on another location? Yeah, so we moved to the Holyoke Mall. Um, we're there currently in the works of trying to get a bigger location because we did downsize. Um, there's some speculation, I guess you could say, that we'll be opening a third location. Uh, just down the street some. I don't know too much about that, but my boss does have plans to... He says franchise, but... I think it'll be a little bit smaller scale than that, but we are planning on opening some more locations. Well, that's good. If people want to find you, they can go to the Holyoke Mall, which I know a lot of people are opposed to that I've talked to. But. Yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those, you win some, you lose some for that. Um, a lot of people like our, um, I don't want to say clientele, but our customer base, um, a lot of them like take public transportation here mm -hmm. and that doesn't go all the way out to the Holyoke Mall. It's one of the only malls that's within a decent driving distance to like other little towns. Like I'm all the way from out and where. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and yeah. so if I'm not here, I'm driving to the Holyoke Mall. I'm taking 45 minutes going through Granby if I don't take the pike. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something, but like it's the mall. It's what I grew Like I didn't even go to the Holyoke Mall for the first time until I was in high school when I <laughs> had a license. <laughs> <laughs> My parents weren't bringing me all the way out to Holyoke, and you know, I feel like we cater to such a large group of individuals, mm -hmm. and they're just kind of taking those individuals, and they're a second thought now. So the movie theater has been closed since COVID, right? Uh, 2020. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of speculation about whether it was going to open again or not, but then something happened or other between the mall and the movie people and they slashed the screens. They took the seats out. They said, if you don't want us, we're not going to let you have another movie company move in because there was some talk about that. And then honestly, that's personally what I think was the final nail in the coffin for the mall was getting rid of the movies. Yeah, that, that was... was such a steady flow of people, especially teenagers, you know, my generation. That's where we would hang out after we got out of school. And then even with COVID, that's actually how this business came to be is my boss had those small business grants. So we opened this during COVID. We ended up upsizing halfway through the year. And then now it's all just closing again. And it's not even like we have something legitimate to blame it on. It's just they stopped. There was at one point I heard that the entire maintenance crew and like staff for them all quit like they just straight up up and left and then there was a lot of negotiating to get them back <laughs> um that's just what i heard but from what i've seen there's a lot of things that aren't getting taken care of uh, blame who you want lack of care from when we were closed for so long but it's there's just not much left for them to do without a serious serious like push from the people do you think it could be repaired i definitely think it could i think if we had the right investor which is why i hate to hear that they're tearing the whole thing down just to build a new mall or apartments they don't really know what it is yet but they know they want to tear this down and it's going to be at least two years now from what i've been told they offered all of the businesses here the chance to open in the new mall in two years Nobody could be out of business for two Nobody, years. No, and, yeah. and then like, and we only recently moved to the Holyoke Mall and the things we went through just to get that store up in motion, I can only imagine how that must be for the littler people. Like we do pretty well with our rocks, but there's only so much 
foot traffic you can build yourself off of. And like, thankfully we've been building that clientele for like two years, but some of the other small and pop, uh, the small mom and pop shops, they don't have that. They don't like uh, the Mocha Emporium. Oh, I know. Um, they're one of our favorite spots. They have best hot chocolate I've ever had, <laughs> but they haven't even been able to open some of the time because it's just so crazy out here. And there's just not a lot of foot traffic. Um, during the Christmas season, we went from making as much as we made to having about four customers a day now. Um, it's it's crazy. Like the Holyoke Mall, that's its whole own situation. But the mall, ever since the news of it closing, people are just coming less and less. So it's making it harder to last out for the people who are trying to stay till June. Like yeah. we're going to stay because thankfully they haven't been so mean. They've given some deals, cut some rent here and there. But um, it's pretty much just storage at this point. We're just keeping our stuff here until we can get it all to the other place. She wasn't kidding when she said a lot of the residents rely on public transportation in this area. Many of the mall's current patrons do take the bus in to the mall. There's a frequent bus service that comes in and out of this place. And I wanted to interview them coming off the bus. I tried, people were resistant. People would talk to me off camera and talking to people outside just didn't work because of the weather. I tried to add commentary myself outside, but as you can see, the wind was pretty intense. <laughs> Hence the commentary after. I couldn't interview them inside because of the music. So interviewing the bus patrons just wasn't working out. The movie theater wound up being one of the things that both customers and store owners complained about the most. Losing a movie theater was a massive blow to this mall. Traffic just never returned to the way it was before. This particular wing of the mall too just felt more neglected than other areas. There was a lot of ceiling leaks. It just, it just felt dark and cold and isolated and you never want to have those feelings inside of a mall. You could still see in there, and it was a sad sight. One thing that this area did become after it closed as a movie theater was a courthouse, which was one of the strangest things. I, <laughs> I never would have guessed that. And just looking in there, you can just, you can just see that it's just destroyed. Most of the closed storefronts that have been closed for a while, they did have those ceiling leaks. You can just tell it has been a while since that gate had been open. I remember going to this movie theater and watching movies as a kid all the time. Cinemark has closed their Eastfield Mall location and it completely blindsided the owner of the mall and their property manager. Now, Cinemark took over the space in the Eastfield Mall back in 2012 after years being used by Showcase Cinemas. According to the property manager, Dave Thompson, crews came in last week and dismantled the theater, removing the movie screens, lights, and the sound systems. The cinemas at the Eastfield Mall have been empty since last June when Cinemark moved out. Now, it's a potential location to hold proceedings to help distance people during the pandemic. The old cinemas, left vacant when Cinemark abruptly closed last June, are being reworked into trial courts, and state officials are doing it out of necessity. Some 12 juror trials will be able to resume after a long pause due to COVID-19. What happened to the movie theater remains incredibly unfortunate, and with the screens and all the sound equipment removed, 
I don't think there's any chance of anyone going in there and making that operable again. That's not to say there's not a lot of reasons to still visit this mall. We've yet to go to one of my favorite stores. As many of you know, I collect vintage toys, cards, and all those things, and a blast from the past remains one of my favorites. We're going to interview one of the owners. Hello everyone, my name is Crystal. I am the owner of A Blast from the Past in the Eastfield Mall in Springfield, Massachusetts. I also have a YouTube channel called A Blast from the Past um, if you want to learn more about my store. Um, unfortunately, the mall is closing this July permanently. It's going to be dust. Um, how, I feel about, like, how I feel about that is mixed emotions. Um, I feel like they brought small businesses into the mall last year and the year before and they encouraged the city encouraged these small businesses to come start your business open your business and a year later they're booting us out um to bring bigger corporations bigger marketers and that kills us small business owners um i do great here i am able to pay my bills here my bills at home and have a pocket full of money um so it kind of sucks um, not only that, but if the mall did its job marketing for other businesses, small, there's 14 small businesses in this mall, mm -hmm. 14. And if the mall did a little bit of marketing on these small businesses, maybe would have foot traffic. Maybe they can get a Target in here. Maybe a Walmart in here. Maybe a CVS. The problem is there's no marketing. So people don't want to come to this mall, they'd rather go to the Holyoke. They'll do the 25 minute drive because the Holyoke is where it's at. They have the big uh, stores and they also have small businesses, mom and pop shops. So I wish that they would not do what they're doing. I wish that they would fix the mall. Um, I wish that they would bring more companies in, more management in, better management and get this mall popping like it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's sad because when I was in my 20s, I couldn't walk in this mall. I mean, it was phenomenal. And I feel like it's the management's problem. It's the management's fault because people aren't doing their jobs to get people inside. And Maya Sar Dominic Sarno, to me, is killing these small businesses in this mall. Because last year, he was all for it. We were on the news. I got a certificate because I opened a business during COVID. And now they don't care nothing about us. They're closing in July, whether we find a place or not. Now, what is your plan after July? So, I'm already looking for some spots. Um, I got played at the Holyoke Mall. I've been dealing with the Holyoke Mall since January. Mm. I was guaranteed two spots there. And then so that they gave it to a bigger company. So, my little small business doesn't mean much to them, I guess. Um, so, I'm still looking. I have an appointment tomorrow in Indian Orchard. I looked yesterday also in Indian Orchard, so I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to close my shop because of what they're trying to do. I do too good here. I have too many customers that love my store. Um, I have what nobody has. So um, what I'm going to do going forth is try to find a, a better home for my store and continue to grow and have success. I'm so sad about what's going on. It's ridiculous. But yeah. They don't care. It's all about money. Last year, it was all about the small businesses and how well we we did and all this. And now it's, let's, let's close your booch out and put some corporations in here. Makes no sense to me. And the amount of effort that you put into the store is, is it shows, you know? Oh, yes. I love what I do. I wake up in the morning and I don't come to work. This, I love what I do. I love when a customer says, do you have a 1980 G.I. Joe? And I say, yes, I do. Come on. <laughs> and I love when they buy it and they go home and they put it in their man cave. Or, you know, they've been saying, hey, I've been trying to find this for three years. And I finally found it. I love what I do. So I can't just pack up and, and quit. I can't do it. I can't. Not only that, but I'm a Latina and I'm a woman. So everything is already against me. So me building, not only me, sorry, me and my husband built this. If it wasn't for my husband, we wouldn't even have this because he's the one that collected all this and bought all this. But together we made something that we love to do. And it sucks, you know, that they're trying to rip it out from us. That's nothing. The sports zone's not even open because it's packed. 
but I have signed jerseys, signed baseball bats, signed helmets with COAs. Oh God, autographs, I got it all. So, and I got a great customer base for it. So, just trying to find a new home, that's all. I, I wish that I had, I had an opportunity with my people person, with my skills, with my personality. If I had the chance to buy this mall, this mall would be on and popping. It would be better than Holyoke Mall. I'd It'd be like the good that. old days. It would be like the 90s where you can come in and eat, watch a movie, and, and, and grab a t-shirt and just have good times and good fun. But what happened is... Nobody does that anymore. And everybody just wants to do nothing. It's like nobody wants to work anymore. I wish I could make this place into a gold mine what it was years ago. Those 16 new Latino-owned businesses opened within the last six months, 22 in total when it comes to the Eastfield Mall. And if you walk around, you'll notice that things are heading in more of a local direction. In fact, you'll still see some of those larger chains, but now there's a number of small and family-owned businesses. 16 new businesses at the Eastfield Mall today, all of which are Latino-owned. The Massachusetts Latino Chamber of Commerce will host a celebration at the mall at 11 this morning. They will honor the now 22 Latino-owned businesses operating out of the mall. 16 of them have opened in the last six months alone. So the next question is, why would the mall and the local community give these stores such a warm welcome? only to kick them to the curb such a short time later. So many of these small businesses poured their hearts and souls into their storefronts. Some of them may have spent their life savings on this. And so many of these people told me they've seen a dramatic decline in business in the past six months. The next person we're going to speak with has been with the mall on and off for over eight years now. Uh, my name is Dwight Bell and I operate the store along with my wife who is the ex-owner of Goddess Boutique here in the Eastfield Mall. Um, we've been here in the mall approximately eight years off and on. My wife has been operating also with her mom in another business and she decided to branch out on her own recently. So we've been here about a month or so and um, we knew that the mall was going to be closing. However, this was treated as a pop-up shop and it's done pretty well, more better than we actually expected. And um, it is a shame that it's this is closing down because we're g gaining steam at this time right now. I believe that the closure could have been handled a little differently. Um, they probably, this probably could have been run as an opportunity for the community or the, the individuals who own businesses here to pool money together um, and purchase them all themselves uh, and be able to be uh, self-run, kind of like a, a sports team, uh, the Green Bay Packers, uh, that's the only team in sports that's actually owned by the people of uh, Wisconsin and not the uh, individual, an individual owner at that point. So that that would have been a good idea yeah, and then maybe they could have put the mm -hmm. money behind as far as the council people could have put their appropriate amount of dollars and matched and been able to keep them all open and keep it moving just for the individual small business people that are here that are going to be displaced do you think there's anything that could be done to save them all at this point I think it's pretty much a done deal I think that's the part that sucks about all of this that the uh, council people should have stepped in and especially considering this is an election year remember people we're voting for you and this could be a way to swing your way out of office dwight brings up a few very good points there one common theme i've noticed is a lot of contention towards the mayor another topic people have brought up quite a bit is why was there no crowdfunding effort to save them all. There wasn't even a chance given. I had quite a few people bring that up. They have this beautiful store that is done so well for them. 
and now they're left wondering where they're going to relocate to. I hope they find a good home, a permanent home, shortly after this closure. Mayor Dominic Sarno said that the proposal is on his desk, but he's not ready to announce the details until the time is right. That being said, what does this mean for the small minority businesses that are at the Eastfield Mall? 22 News asked the mayor if he plans to offer city aid for those businesses. I had stressed uh, to the ownership and management about being cognizant and being thoughtful uh, in reaching out. Uh, for uh, relocation assistance, whether it's temporary in nature or not, to the existing businesses there. He also pointed to the millions in American Rescue Plan funding that has already gone out to small businesses, 92% minority owned. As for how the property will be repurposed, Sarno said the developers are looking to take a village approach. State Representative Carlos Gonzalez added that could look a lot like housing. We are sad that we're losing businesses. However, housing is a major issue in this city and throughout the state of Massachusetts. So converting it to housing, I think it's the most appropriate uh, opportunity right now for the city of Springfield. Anyone you ask will tell you that the mayor has not been considerate of the businesses or the patrons. Many of the people who I spoke with that got there by means of bus told me that they heard the mall reconstruction will take two years. They heard of things like a Bob's Discount Furniture coming in, a Chick-fil-A, apartments, just a variety of things. And at this point, it's safe to say we don't know for sure at this moment what it's going to become. It's not fair. It's just not fair. And at this point, I think all we can do is remember what the mall used to be. And for now, go and visit the small businesses. Go and give them support. They put together beautiful shops that deserve recognition. And I only covered three of them. I wish everybody who visits the mall as customers and the store owners all the best in the future. I hope that their relocations go smoothly and I hope that the citizens of Springfield and the surrounding area can find something to do in the meantime. I hope that when the mall is reconstructed, if it is a mall, I hope that these shop owners can come back if they choose to. After being treated like this, if they didn't want to, I wouldn't blame them. It's just a sad situation all around. Can the mall be saved at this point? I don't know. I certainly don't think so, but I hope this video draws some attention to it. For now, let's take a moment and think back on some of the things we witnessed here, some of the beautiful memories and moments. Eastfield Mall will be missed. We're a very easy mall to shop. We're all on one level. We have plenty of parking, and we also have some great stores that have fantastic gifts this holiday season. This Christmas Eve day, Eastfield Mall was packed with shoppers racing to find the best deals. There are such great deals right now. It's worth going out on Christmas Eve. Smaller crowds, bigger deals, and worthwhile savings. Believe it or not, some shoppers have made a tradition out of hunting for gifts the night before Christmas. Usually I am every year. I really don't like crowds. I, I come out like first thing in the morning when everything's open and get what I have to get. I usually know exactly what I have to get and get it and I'm out. Experienced Christmas Eve shoppers like Pamela have it down to a science. 
They can be found at the same mall every year and know exactly what's left on their list. So all of that can be found right here at the Eastfield Mall. Right here. Everything's all in one place, one level, so you don't have to worry about going to a bunch of different places to shop. Absolutely. I'm here for a gift. Well, you're in the right place. With over 90 great stores and restaurants, Eastfield Mall's got just what you need, all on one easy shopping level. One level. Hiking the breeze. It's just what we need. It's just what we need. <laughs> it's really simple. Eastfield Mall. It's the perfect, perfect holiday, holiday mall. mall. It's just what I need. I need a husband. <laughs> well, just about everything you need for the holidays and for the stores you really shop. Eastfield Mall, Springfield. I can't stand the crowds. I can't stand the long lines on Black Friday. The sales have been extended, and they are on unbelievable i just called my husband and said you won't believe how much money i just saved you i have six grandchildren and i've shopped for them all and i've done very well this would be the ultimate in security perimeter protection using voice response all custom car sound security systems are available for immediate installation and qualify for mass insurance discounts too. So hurry down to Custom Car Sound for the best in vehicle protection from Clifford, Viper, and Invisibine. Custom Car Sound, Riverdale Road in West Springfield. WHYN AM 560. WHYN Sports at 11 before 9. Well, let's uh, first of all take a look at the uh, schedule of sports for today. Uh, you're going to be hanging around the house, uh, drinking some eggnog, and uh, relaxing this afternoon. <laughs> I'm sure if the women of the house want the men to get any work done, just be warned. There are sports on TV today, Christmas Day from 12 noon, running up until about midnight tonight. It starts with the always exciting Blue-Gray All-Star Classic. Uh, not, not too many of the big names going to be playing in that, but that is at noon time on Channel 40. And then at 3.30, ought to be fun to watch the Aloha Bowl, Georgia Tech versus Stanford, uh, 3.30, Channel 40.